<laughs> it happened. It actually happened. Oh my god. I can't wait to tell you about it. Uh, hi there, my name's Guy. You're watching Midwinter Minis, and last weekend I travelled to the UK's Lead Belt to visit Warhammer World and attend Golden Demon 2022. And not gonna lie, I had an awesome time, but as ever, it's not quite that simple, is it? And I think I've figured out what's wrong with Golden Demon. At least this year's Golden Demon. I tried my absolute best to get a ticket as soon as they became available in both waves of sales, but missed out. And that made me kind of sad because I was sort of hoping to enter something and make a video about painting my entry, which likely would have been the hardest I'd ever pushed myself on any paint job ever. Anyway, as you probably already know, it was the first UK Golden Demon event in three years due to uh, the thing. The thing that kept people inside a lot of the time and rekindled passions for solitary hobbies like miniature painting. Consequently, there was a huge demand for tickets, and as I said, it was sold out in less than one minute, meaning there were quite a few big name mini painters and past winners who weren't able to attend. Other people have covered this issue, so let's not bang on about it. Anyway, Andy from the Warhammer community team reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and asked if I would be able to visit Warhammer World and document the competition as press. Essentially, the caveat being that I wouldn't be given a ticket, so I couldn't enter Golden Demon. So I swallowed down the temptation to be a big sulky crybaby and said, sure, that would be awesome, thanks for thinking of me. And no, I haven't signed any NDAs or sold my soul, it seems like Games Workshop are, touch wood, just starting to act like other big companies do with creators who cover their stuff. The funny part is my mate Steve, the guy who's been helping me on my Titan project the last few videos and rescued the stranded Space Marine arm for me, actually had a ticket to Golden Demon, so he was entering not just one thing, but five. That man is on a mission. The original plan was that Hattie would be coming with me after her little holiday in Florida, but uh, Hurricane Ian had different ideas. So we set off for Nottingham at 6am and rocked up three hours later with big smiles on our faces. The first thing I did was enter the Hobby Challenge. As I said, I couldn't enter the Golden Demon competition with my press pass, but I might as well try and win a Scrap Demon, huh? The concept was basically make what you like, based around one of the two special edition minis on offer, either the Primaris Company Champion or Mugrock De Watcher, and taking what you want from the crazy amount of sprues and bits on the table, with five hours to build it, paint it, and get it submitted for judging. I went for the Space Marine, and having a look at the sprues, there were a lot of Age of Sigmar Chaos Warrior bits, so I reckon some naughty chaotic conversion is in order. As these fancy special edition minis are monopose character figures, a lot of stuff is moulded on in place, like the tabard is a part of the legs, the arms are modelled in a weird way where you can't really use individual parts without just building it fully and cutting it up. So I assembled the torso and the legs and then just cut it in half. Seems a bit of a waste. Chaos Warrior legs look alright, maybe a bit too small, but to be honest I'm still working with pre-primaris proportions in my mind. Whew, say pre-primaris proportions five times fast. I like this Chaos Warrior head, but I'm not sure which way I want it to face yet, so I'll wait until I've got the arms on. This Storm Bolter off the Munitorum container sprue was the only one I could find in the whole table of sprues, so I had it. The right arm is from a Space Marine Infiltrator sprue, and one of the special weapon hands with the gun snipped off was a nice arm to hold that Storm Bolter. I cut away a bit of the left arm shoulder to get a better sword swinging arm angle away from the body, and stuck that on too. The sword on the Primaris model was a bit too Imperial looking, so I stole this Chaos Warrior sword to use instead, and used one of the battle maces to make the butt of the sword look a bit meaner. Okay, now I know what this model roughly will look like, I can stick the head on to suit the pose. There were precisely zero Chaos Space Marine power packs and sprues on the table, so I snipped away the vents from the Primaris pack it came with, and replaced them with Grey Knight helmets, smashing in the front of them with some snips. Yeah, nice little narrative touch. I didn't have any moulding materials like milliput or green stuff with me, and even if I did, I wouldn't have had the time to use it, so to hide all the really hideous bits of ugly connection points, I cut up some of the cloaks and capes from the Chaos Warrior sprues and tucked them under the power pack and around the torso. Fashioning some makeshift pauldrons from the Chaos Warrior shield cut up into more fitting shapes. Now just because I didn't have my hobby drill with me doesn't give me an excuse to not drill the barrels. A nice sharp scalpel tip will do the job in a pinch. A few extra bits of chaos goodness from some random sprues, including a part of a chaos star over a shoulder and a little skull on the base. And to use a tiny bit more of the original model, I used the helmet for a decapitated head on the base. 
Okay, on to painting. It was at this point I realized that pretty much everyone else was making cool dioramas using all the terrain bits from the whole table, and stupid old me had just built a pretty average looking chaos land. Oh well. To be honest, it's not really worth talking about my painting process here. I was a bit out of my comfort zone as I was only using Citadel paints, something which I never really do. Not because I don't like the paints, I just don't know what they are because they have weird names that don't give you much clue as to the true colour, and I'm red-green colourblind. I also had to use Citadel paint brushes, which I actually quite liked. The new white-handled synthetic series seems pretty good. I started off with it being primed black and dry brushed the body with purples and pinks. The cloaks and fabric were base coated green and highlighted up by mixing in some yellows and off-whites. The weapons got some silver, the chainmail and trim were base coated gold, and the bone and horns got some creamy off-white. As I was at Warhammer World, I thought it would be fitting to use one of the in-house army painter's secrets and use a mix of black wash, a lighter brown wash, and medium in equal parts to create a generic all-over shade that does a lot of heavy lifting for defining shadows in darker areas. While I waited for that to dry, I painted the lava on the scenic base, starting with red and building up to yellow with a rough, attempted and kind of failed fluid look. And then I tidied up the flat parts of the base with charcoal black. My wash wasn't drying fast enough to start highlighting, so I decided this would be a pretty good time to bend the rules slightly and use the hand dryer in the gents toilet to speed things up. After that, just a few quick highlights mixing the base coat colours with either white or creamy colours did the trick. And after just under three hours of kit bashing and painting, I submitted my corrupted Primaris Company champion come Chaos Warrior. I was one of the first to finish, so I went to get some lunch. Bugman's sure isn't skimping on portion sizes these days. Whew. While I waited for the rest of the hobby group to finish, I checked out the History of Golden Demon display they had set up in the staff canteen where the hobby challenge was taking place. So many amazing previous winners and memorabilia from the last few decades of Golden Demon competitions. Really awe-inspiring stuff. I could have spent hours and hours looking at the models in the cabinets. David Soper's amazing converted predator that inspired my own Nurgle Land Raider, Mike McVeigh's incredible dioramas, Richard Gray's Mortarian, and so, so many more. Really a testament to the true art and creative energy that goes into miniature painting. I thought it would be a good time to take a look at the actual 2022 Golden Demon cabinets, you know, the whole reason I'm here with my press pass, but the place was absolutely packed and I didn't want to be ramming people out of the way to get good shots, and I'm sure I'll get better shots first thing tomorrow morning when it's a bit quieter. So what did I do with my last hour? Did you watch my video last week where I painted this super rare white dwarf squat model? Well, the box itself entitles you to a one-year subscription to White Dwarf, but it was released in 2009, and uh, quite a few things have happened since then, but it doesn't have an expiry date on the box, so I wanted to give it a go, and where better than the actual storefront at Games Workshop HQ. So I presented it to the lovely staff who frantically but justifiably looked for some kind of expiry date, but alas, there was none to be found. It got passed on to the manager, Baz, who I've known for ages. He was the store manager of the Edinburgh branch when I got back into the hobby. Long story short, he said yes. Total, total hero. We set the White Dwarf subscription up for my mate Simon, it's his model after all, and not only that, the absolute icing on the cake. They suggested that, due to the model's rarity, they keep it on display in the store, box and model. Gotta be honest, I never thought having a little painted toy in a shop cabinet could make me so happy, but man, I was giggling like an absolute idiot for hours. What an amazing way to end day one at Golden Demon 2022. Sunday, results day, I got in early to check out this year's entries up close. Now I know I touched on it before, so while you take a look at some of my favourite entries in the cabinets, let me tell you about what I think is the problem with Golden Demon, and rather than just being a big negative Nancy, offer some sort of solution as well. So it was always going to be rough, right? It was the perfect storm, three years since the last event, in which time the hobby saw a massive surge of interest due to the thing. People taking up miniature painting, people who already did it got real good, and some people who just started got real good real fast. Now I don't exactly know how many tickets there were, but judging by the amount of people I saw at the weekend, I'm guessing around four or five hundred. So more people wanted tickets, right? Just do it at a bigger venue. Forget 500, get 5,000 people in there. I mean, it sounds cool, but that's just going to create another huge problem. 
Golden Demon is judged by the Evy Metal team, the creme de la creme of Games Workshop in-house mini painters. It's a small team looking for very specific things to satisfy a mysterious rubric. Let's say that if there was already 500 entries and essentially judging them needs to be done in the space between people leaving on the penultimate day and bedtime, that gives a handful of judges about six hours to make the big choices. That's already only 45 seconds of analysis per model. If there were 5,000 people and no extra judges, that would be just four seconds per model. No, more tickets just isn't gonna fix it. In my mind, the solution seems pretty simple. Don't make the events bigger, just have more events. This plan is a little bit biased towards the UK, but given that Games Workshop is based in the UK, and there's a pretty strong argument to be made that the UK is the cultural home of wargaming in general, I think it's pretty fair. So I reckon one year of extra events spread throughout the UK would be the way to go. Golden Demon at Warhammer World in the Midlands, Golden Demon London, Golden Demon Scotland, and maybe Golden Demon Wales or Ireland would let way more people get involved spreading the hobby love to places that don't usually get Games Workshop events close to home. And I hear what you're saying, but Guy, having four events in one year would devalue the prestige of attaining a Golden Demon. Hard disagree, my friend. We've had three years of no events to catch up with. And as I said, it would just be for one year to let all that pent up hobby energy out, and then we can resume with yearly events, business as usual. Maybe hold back the Slayer Sword for the final event as a true best of the best award. What do you reckon? You think that might work? Let me know what you think in the comments or if you've got a better idea. So after I got all that lovely footage, I was free to just wander around until the ceremony later on. No hobby challenge today. So I just spent my time going around saying hi to the amazing painters that I recognized and meeting fans of the channel. I still find it absolutely bonkers that people know or care who I am, especially at an event where most people in attendance had entered a supremely painted miniature and are without question, demonstrably more talented than I am. Before the ceremony, Steve and I calmed our nerves by checking out the Warhammer World Museum. Now, not many people are allowed to film in here, but hey, press pass. The museum is always the highlight of a trip to Warhammer World for me, and there's something new and cool to see each time I visit. I don't want to ruin the whole thing for you just in case you end up visiting, but my favorite parts are the absolutely enormous battle scenes and huge dioramas. Each one is packed with fun narrative details and are incredibly impressive both up close and from afar. It's really hard to give you an idea of the scale of some of these things, but maybe this gives you an idea. It's a really superbly curated and well presented experience for any Warhammer fan and set out in such a way that, to be honest, it's probably pretty cool for people who don't even really care about our silly little toy soldiers. One of the final rooms is a breathtakingly vast battle scene with thousands and thousands of minis, and it apparently took the whole exhibition team nine months to build and paint. Crazy. Once you're done in the museum, it kicks you out into the store with your appetite well and truly whetted. Anyway, no time to buy anything now because the ceremony is about to begin. After a few false starts with getting the big screen working, we were good to go. Montage, baby.
don't know if you noticed there, but Steve won a golden demon. He said he expected nothing, but if he got through to the final and got a pin, he'd treat himself to a Forge World thing at the shop. And after a bit of discussion, we agreed that five finalist pins, two commended entries, and a silver award merited a pretty deserving treat. So, a Reva Titan it is. Special thanks to Amber in the shop for enabling our terrible financial decisions. Speaking of models, I'm going to give away the two commemorative models I picked up while I was there, and I'll run a little competition for Patreon supporters this month. Speaking of which, here are this week's latest awesome heroes who decided to take the plunge and support Midwinter Minis. Rory Summers, Microwave Oven, Jay Wire, Nick Hyatt, Rob Gonzalez, Creature Creature, Elias Hammer, Dodgy Wilf, Tamsin Bob Yeah, Rummy Bears, and Antonine. And that's it for this video. Let me know what you think of my ideas of how to improve the Golden Demon experience in the future, and I'd love to hear any ideas you have too. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.